We are going to be reacting to the debate between what's his name? Mehdi Hassan and and Elon Levy, I think. Elon, the scumbag. Intro. Have you guys watched the debate? Yes. Okay. Interesting. I've got some bits that I've um, screen recorded. Who do you think won? Mehdi Hassan. <laughs> All day, every day, isn't it? Last October, shortly after October 7th, Israeli forces struck a three-story residential building in Gaza City. They killed 15 members of the Al-Dos family, seven children. According to Amnesty International, the survivors say no warnings. No warnings were given to evacuate. Amnesty found no evidence of any military targets in the area. And Israel, to this day, has offered no explanation for that strike. So, for the dead Al-Dos family members, Elon, can you tell us why they were killed? Mr. Hassan, the IDF does not owe you immediate answers, and the fact that Amnesty speaks... <laughs> The fact Gold that Amnesty speaks to local question. witnesses intimidated by Hamas does not mean that there was not a military target. But was there? The but was there? Because Israel has never said Mr. there was Hassan, a military target. Hamas booby-trapped 40 percent of Gaza's buildings. It dug tunnels underneath homes and schools. We're back and to hospitals. generalities, Elon. No. Not Why did you kill 15 members Mr. of the Al-Dos family? Let him, let him know, speak, and please. I do not need to explain you every do. single you strike. You do. That's Mary, what you're here no, today. Mr. Mary, no, Mr. Hold Hassan. It. 15 people were killed, seven children. You were spokesperson for the Israeli government at the time. Israel has never given an explanation. When you say I do not need to explain myself, you literally do. You were the spokesperson for the government that committed a war crime, and you came to a debate tonight to defend war crimes. So you literally do. Number two, number two. You'll notice, John, how Elon quickly went to abstract generalities. Let's talk specifics. Three American doctors went to Gaza. Dr. Fayyaz Sidwa, Dr. Irfan Galaria, and a Jewish American doctor called Dr. Mark Perlmutter. All of them came back at separate times, said children were brought into hospitals we were in with gunshot to the head, sniper shots. Perfect. Exact targets. There is no tunnel that justifies shooting toddlers in the head. Israeli sniper. <laughs> well, you can tell us why. You can defend them. I find it interesting that Israel was able to pinpoint kill Ismail Haniyeh in a house in a foreign country. But when it comes to Gaza, when it comes to the Gaza Strip, they had to wipe out the whole place. They had to reduce it to 42 million okay, tons of rubble. And one final point, yeah. I just got on factual points. Elon, they're not your neighbors, they're people you occupy, just to be clear. The idea that you prevent another October the 7th or that you destroy Hamas by making tens of thousands of Palestinian children orphans is insane. It doesn't protect Israel. Forget Gaza. It doesn't protect Israel. New York Times published a very long piece which said a month before October the 7th, the head of the Mossad, David Barnier, went to Doha, Qatar, and the Qatari said, do you want us to keep sending money to Gaza? And he went back to Netanyahu. He said, what should I say? And Netanyahu said, yes, please. And he went back. He said, yes, please send the money to Gaza. Elon went to work for the government of Benjamin Netanyahu a month after that words. He's never apologized for that to the Israeli people. Benjamin Netanyahu's never apologized to that to the Israeli people. So if anyone should answer questions about Qatari funding of Hamas, allegedly, reportedly, whatever you want to call it, it's the Israeli government that facilitated it for many, many years. Elon was in that government. He's the spokesperson for that I'll government. Answer. It was a terrible mistake to allow oh, Qatari money mistake. into Gaza. When this war Please. began, Hamas had a fearsome missile arsenal that rained thousands of missiles on our cities. I had to keep running into a rocket shelter. Israel has now eliminated Israel has now eliminated the threat of rocket fire from Gaza. It has cut off its smuggling routes, it has destroyed its missile silos, Sorry. and it has destroyed Hamas's weapons capabilities. That alone has made us safer and makes it easier to sleep so, in our beds at night. A couple of, so Three quick things. Number one, the Israelis went to Supreme Court recently and they were having an argument in the Israel Supreme Court and they put in the official filing that we do not control Gaza. Even after all this time, Hamas is still in control of lots of parts of Gaza. So they say the honest stuff when you're not looking. It's true. Number two, number two, true, I interviewed Ami it's Ayalon true. recently, former head of Shin Bet, former Israeli admiral. He said very explicitly, Israel will not be safe until we give Palestinians freedom. This is his words, not my words. And number three, I'm glad you had a bomb shelter to protect you because the Aldos family in Gaza did not have a bomb shelter. Israel is fighting to put the military pressure on Hamas to release the hostages, but Hamas doesn't want to release the hostages. And the reason it doesn't want to release the hostages is that it knows that the longer this war goes on and the more suffering it generates among its own people in Gaza, the more it advances its own goal of isolating Israel. And Mr. Hassan, it pains me that you do not seem to realize the role that you play within Hamas's strategy when you deflect blame onto Israel. Never demand any accountability never demand any accountability so, from the hamas regime when you so, know that right, hamas's goal is to maximize suffering you give it a reason to drag on this war if you want it to let the hostages go a load. you should tell 
of all Qatar the nonsense to you've said tonight, Hamas to free the hostages. of all the demonstrably untrue things you've said tonight, this is the big one. So apparently, if you want a deal to end the war, you're enabling Hamas's strategy. No. Uh, that's what you just said. No, I'm enabling I did not. Hamas's strategy. So, but you have systematically undermined well, every leverage Israel you know has to free you know the hostages. Who's, you know who's undermining? Eddie, stop pretending Can I answer you care the about the hostages. Of the two of us, hold on. Of the two of us, of the two of us, whose strategy has released more hostages, mine or yours? Because I, I supported a ceasefire. And we got, we got, hold on. Our strategy. We got, we got it. He's trying to occupy the debate. Can Your I finish? strategy Can I finish? is to give cover let, let, for let Hamas's him. war crimes. Can I, I let him finish, please? Over a hundred hostages were released last November in the pause, in the ceasefire deal. A lot of Israelis wanted that to continue. Hostages' families wanted that to continue. Yes. Netanyahu, can I finish my answer? Netanyahu said no. In fact, I interviewed Zahir Omor, whose uncle Avraham Munda was horribly killed in Gaza. Zahir Omor, by the way, was arrested today. He's been arrested and attacked by the Israeli government that Elon served in multiple times. He said to me, Netanyahu and the government, the government that Elon was part of, always choose the wrong way. Ever since October the 8th, everything they do is directed at not getting the hostages back. That is the plain truth. That is the nephew of a hostage. They don't want you to hear about the hostages. Elon and people like Elon use the hostages as political pawns. The hostages' families are standing on the streets of Tel Aviv opposing the Netanyahu government, calling for a ceasefire, calling for a deal. They don't like Elon leaving. They before, don't support Elon. Mr. Hassan, how many hostage rallies we, have you spoken at? How many hostages' mothers have you embraced many, and hugged them how many and told them, I will hit you with whatever you need. You need. I was at Central oh. Park. I was at Let Central Park you. last Sunday at the rally for the no. hostages. You were not. Mr. Hassan, if you really this. care about the Let hostages, me ask you. We I have a spare hostage pin here. If you want to show them you care, you're welcome to put it on the map. All right, let's, this is fantastic. Let's go. So, put it on. Show them you so, care. Show them you care. So, I am in yeah, daily contact go. with the Hamas nice family. Speech. I tell them I will do whatever it takes to help you get your kids home. Show them you care and stop trying to exploit the Okay, okay. Like Elon, allow him to respond. You've got your bit so, of stagecraft. So let's, Please let's, take it. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. You saw the very performative outrage there from Elon there. To be clear, don't you lecture me about hostages when your government has killed more hostages than it has rescued. That's on you. That's on you. And that's that is on Hamas. That's on Hamas. That is on Hamas. Hamas. All right, all right, all right. I will, no, no, I need to finish this point. I'm going to let you finish this point and then we're moving on. I will, I will happily support this pin because I support the release of all the hostages and, and, no, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. And I support, I support the release of thousands of Palestinian detainees being raped and tortured and children. Do you support that? Let's wear it together. Do you support the young? Do you support the release of Palestinians? I, children. I do not support, do you support the release, the release of, of Palestinian children. Of, do you support the release of Palestinian children? Mr. Hassan, anyone let's, who let's is here, some space he here. can't answer the question. Mr. Hassan, he won't I get on the hostage. It. I support the release of all innocent people. He doesn't. He should have told him, you know, when he's grabbing onto him, he's like, don't touch me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is he grabbing onto him yeah. right when he drops the bombshell right at the end yeah. that are you going to support the release of the thousands of detainees? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he even condemned the, the, don't, the, don't get too close. Eh? Yeah, he didn't even condemn the rape. Before I came on stage, Gershon Baskin, who is Israel's most famous hostage negotiator, he WhatsApp me and said he's got a deal, three week deal on the table with Hamas that Hamas has agreed to to release all the hostages and end the war. He says it's with Netanyahu, the bulls in Netanyahu's court. So when he keeps going on about hostages, tell him to speak to his former boss to agree to a hostage. Gershon Baskin for, is the, the negotiator. As for the United in States, whose deal to free Gilad Shalit, we you, release Yehia Sinwa. The, as for the United States, it is tragic to me as a citizen of the United Kingdom and the United States that my two countries have armed Israel as it carries out what the ICJ has called a plausible genocide. No, as it, it arms has a prime not. minister Mr. who is Hassan. wanted for war crimes. Mr. Hassan. The ICC Mr. chief prosecutor has called for the arrest of Yov Gallant and Benjamin Netanyahu. The American government should not be arming a man wanted for war crimes and Elon Levy should have began his speech tonight apologizing for working for a man who is wanted for war crimes by the ICC chief prosecutor.
You want to convince the people of Gaza that terrorism is a dead end, then stop inflicting terrorism on them. Israel withdrew from the Gaza Strip in 2005 and never wanted to go back. It gave them Gaza. They had the option to turn it into Singapore. They chose to turn it into Mosul. They could have had a thriving state in Gaza after Israel pulled out and Jewish organizations paid to donate the greenhouses. Instead, they chose to rig Gaza for war. Simple answer is, of course, Israel did not pull out of Gaza, as the ICJ has pointed out just recently. <laughs> Gaza is occupied territory. Let me put it very simply to you. What Elon doesn't tell you is when they, when they pulled out, they kept control of Gaza's land borders, uh, not with Egypt, waters, not with, with Egypt, Egypt. with of course Egypt. We control the borders. Egypt We're on the other kept side. Kept the of land it. borders. Kept the, have you noticed? Let, I let, never let, let should answer without this. an interruption. The land borders, the sea waters, the air, and wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. And the population registry. If you're born in Gaza, you have to be registered with the Israelis. If you were born in New York and your birth had to be registered with a foreign country, would you say you're occupied or not occupied? Would you say you're a free people or an unfree people? It's an absolute lie. The occupation never ended. The ICJ literally, the other day, said Gaza is occupied. But Elon and I went to the same university. We did the same degree. He didn't do law. He's not a lawyer. The ICJ says Gaza is occupied. It's over. The debate's over. You've lost that one. Cindy McCain is the head of the World Food Program. She is the widow of the most pro-Israeli senator of my lifetime, John McCain. She has accused Israel of blocking aid trucks, killing aid workers, starving children. Cindy McCain is not UNRWA or Hamas. Was Israel justified in carrying out one of the most intense civilian punishment campaigns in history, according to Dr. Robert Pape at the University of Chicago, dropping 500-pound bombs, 1,000-pound bombs, 2,000-pound bombs on schools, hospitals, uh, universities, bookstores, libraries, mosques, churches, refugee camps, apartment buildings, cemeteries, cemeteries, destroying a higher percentage of buildings in northern Gaza than the Allies destroyed in Dresden during World War II, reducing Gaza to 42 million tons of rubble while they got people out of the way? How is that justified? Dropping a bomb, for example, on a six-story apartment building in central Gaza last October, killing more than 100 people inside, including more than 50 children, with no Hamas target in sight, according to Human Rights Watch, with no explanation offered by the Israeli military. Even till today, was that justified, Elon? Was Israel justified in telling people to go to safe zones and then bombing them and killing them in those safe zones? According to NBC, there were seven deadly airstrikes between January and April in areas that the Israeli military had specifically designated as safe zones, killing Palestinian civilians like Sabrine Sakani, who was 30 weeks pregnant at the time. She was killed in a safe zone in April. Her little baby, newborn baby, died less than a week later. Was that justified too, Elon? Was Israel justified in killing a record number of kids in Gaza, 16,000 children, turning Gaza into what the UN has called a graveyard for children, according to Save the Children, killing more kids in the first three weeks that were killed globally in each of the past four years, killing little kids like six-year-old Hind Rajab and her 15-year-old sister Leanne firing 335 bullets into the car they were in. 335 bullets and then killing the two paramedics who went to try and rescue them. Was that justified too, Elon? Was Israel justified in killing a record number of aid workers in Gaza, right? A record number. Targeting, targeting again and again, systematically. Car by car, according to Chef Jose Andreas. A specifically explicitly marked World Central Kitchen aid convoy killing seven aid workers in the process. Was that justified? Was Israel justified in starving the people of Gaza using food and water as a weapon of war to quote both the EU and Oxfam? Was Israel justified in blocking aid trucks from going into Gaza simply because they carry things like crutches, nail clippers, and even chocolate croissants, according to the Washington Post? Was Israel justified in raping, sodomizing Palestinian detainees who are charged with no crimes whatsoever, putting hot rods up their rectums, putting hot rods up their rectums, amputating their limbs, according to CNN and the New York Times. Was that rape and torture justified, Elon? Israel, according to the ICC chief prosecutor, who put out a statement calling for the arrest of Elon's former boss, Benjamin Netanyahu, said that Israel may have military goals, legitimate goals, but the way they're carried out, killing innocent people, starving people, is criminal, he said. Criminal, think about that. Elon Levy is a former spokesperson for a man who the ICC chief prosecutor wants arrested for war crimes. Elon himself has produced a number of lies in service of those war crimes. He has a bunch of tweets still up tonight which say that babies were beheaded on October the 7th, babies were baked in ovens, babies were ripped from their mother's wombs. October 7th was bad enough, but Elon had to exaggerate it for atrocity purposes. Those tweets are still up. Why would you trust anything this man says to you tonight? Look, he's here. He's here to gaslight you. 
to defend the indefensible, to excuse the inexcusable, to justify the unjustifiable, but you don't need to. Tonight, you can choose to be on the side, not of cruelty, not of criminality, but on the side of the innocent people of Gaza who are being killed as we speak tonight, as we speak by Elon's former colleagues in the Israeli military on the orders of Elon's former bosses in the Israeli government. What we've heard tonight is that nothing justifies October the 7th, but October the 7th justifies everything. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you, no, October the 7th does not justify everything. It does not justify the suffering in Gaza. It does not justify the killing of kids in Gaza. It does not justify the starvation in Gaza. It does not justify the rape and torture of Palestinian detainees, which Elon refused to condemn tonight. It does not justify any of that. It doesn't justify the tearing up of the Geneva Conventions, the defiance of international law and the ICC and our own Leahy law. Yes, October the 7th was a war crime, but the response to a war crime is not to commit your own series of war crimes on an epic scale. 33 times as many people killed since October the 7th as were killed on October the 7th. And I'll say this to you. Look, very, very clearly, if you support this motion tonight, you are opening the gates of hell, not just in Gaza, but globally, because every dictator and tyrant around the world will say, Israel's actions were justified, then so are mine. Putin, Assad, Kim, they'll all say, Israel killed kids, Israel killed aid workers, Israel killed journalists, so can we. And I will be very clear, I will be very clear with you tonight. If you are here tonight, ladies and gents, if you're here tonight to defend what Israel's done, knowing full well what Israel has done, if you're defending the human suffering in Gaza, the amputation of little kids, if you're doing that in full knowledge, then you're not just here to defend the indefensible or justify the unjustifiable. I'm sorry, you're a sociopath. And I will say to you, don't, please, 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 don't be a sociopath tonight. Don't support war crimes. Don't defend a genocide. Join me and every human rights organization in the world, every humanitarian aid agency on the planet, every American doctor and nurse who's been out to volunteer in Gaza. Join us in opposing this ridiculous and offensive and horrendous motion. And on behalf of the Aldos family, who Elon clearly doesn't give a damn about, I beg to oppose this motion.